a very good afternoon and a warm welcome to the ndla club's uh, 17th global event i am dr vignesh and i am part of the national digital library of india team as many of you are uh, aware the national digital library today has over uh, 8.1 crore knowledge resources in almost uh, all domains of education and research in over 100 different uh, learning resource formats like ebooks articles thesis dissertations video lectures audio lectures manuscripts data sets newspaper articles etc and in order to promote this culture of uh, uh, learning and reading especially among the young generation the national digital library of india has been encouraging uh, the educational institutions to set up ndla clubs across the country and today we have over 2900 ndla clubs that are operational as i said this is the 17th in the series of uh, the global events that uh, the national digital library has been organizing and today we are very pleased to have with us uh, professor uh, vigneshwar ilavarasan uh, who is a professor at the department of management studies iit delhi and uh, i have known professor uh, vignesh uh, for over 15 years now so we met in one of the conferences uh, way back in uh, uh, 2007 i believe at uh, kuala lumpur uh, and we have been good friends uh, ever since and today we are going to listen to uh, professor uh, Vignesh on this very relevant and important topic of uh, startups in India dreams myths and uh, reality and now i would like to invite uh, professor uh, partha pradeep chakrabarty uh, by uh, now many of you know professor chakrabarty who is the key architect of uh, the national digital library uh, to formally welcome our resource person and our audience over to professor chakrabarty thank you vignesh so we have as usual two vignesh today so we are we are doubly blessed uh, with two vigneshes with this i would like to welcome professor p vigneshwara professor p vigneshwara illavarasan a phd from iit kanpur which as dr vignesh sharma mohan mentioned is a professor who professor illavarasan is a professor of information systems at the department of management studies iit delhi he researches and teaches about interaction and of information and communication technologies of, with society and business dr ilavarasan has been a visiting research fellow at the united nations university school of computing and society macau and school of management curtin university perth australia he is a recipient of the outstanding young faculty fellowship award at iit delhi and the professor m n srinivas memorial prize at the indian sociological society he is also a senior research fellow at lirne asia a leading regional ict policy and regulation think tank he has received large research grants from the department of science and technology government of india icssr idrc canada oxford analytica uk ipts european commission cippec argentina and idea dot idea corp philippines his research has appeared in all the leading international journals and conferences of repute in his domain Professor Ilavarasan has taught at Pondicherry Central University and at the IIM Rohtak Indore and Amritsar. His present teaching interests include social media and business practices, management information systems, business marketing research methods and ICTs, development of businesses, his specific research interests our information and communication technologies and development and social media and business practices today as you have just heard he is going to speak about a very interesting topic of startups in india dreams myths and realities without wasting much time i hand it over to professor vignesh on behalf of national digital library of india iit kharagpur and the whole fraternity of the ndli clubs it is my honor and privilege to have you with us professor 
and we look forward to hearing from you. Yeah, thank you very much, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. Namaskar. Uh, before I begin this talk, uh, I will start with uh, disclaimers. Uh, I'm feeling really, really tense. Number one, uh, Dr. Vignesh uh, told me that he's a friend. Hope I, hopefully, I don't spoil his name through my talk. And I'm also tensed for Sir Partha, sir, uh, Partha is around and uh, we've given his contributions to the society. I'm still uh, looking at this as in this direction, getting inspired every day. Now, hopefully I don't even disappoint him as well in today's talk. Right. So whatever I'm trying to do is based on my own efforts and uh, mistakes are completely mine. You should not blame these two people who invited me for this talk. And I also feel really, really honored to be uh, here to delivering this talk and interacting with you. Okay. So this talk is basically, uh, I'm pitching this talk for students who are doing a second year, a third year, or a fourth year in uh, engineering colleges, typically coming from uh, tier two or three, tier three uh, towns, smaller places, right? Uh, um, I would like to provide a, a broad introduction about uh, startups in India, which is a lot more uh, uh, kind of familiar to people who are located in metropolitan places. Right, I'm open for a lot more questions. Uh, feel free to stop me. I write that in comments. I'll be happy to respond to that. All right, and I will share my screen. I'm going to use uh, a PowerPoint uh, in doing this particular talk. Okay. Uh, hope you are able to see my uh, PowerPoint presentations now. Right, uh, and uh, before I begin this talk, uh, since this is going to be uh, staying in uh, YouTube and uh, it's going to be seen by people uh, later as well. Uh, whatever images are, that are being used in this particular presentation is not mine. I'm going to use a lot of uh, images that I took it from various sources. In some places, I have mentioned the sources. Some places, I did not. So sources are not mine. And uh, the sec one, second one is uh, I may be using uh, this particular facts or uh, figures in this particular presentation purely for demonstration purposes, purely for instructional purposes not for uh, demeaning anyone or I don't have any Ill, Ill intentions. So please forgive me if I make any mistakes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, with this particular uh, uh, lot more uh, uh, disclaimers, I start this talk. So next uh, 35 minutes or 40 minutes or so, I'm going to talk about uh, startups in India. I will, uh, I'll try to cover three broader areas in terms of dreams, myths and reality. They are interwoven in my talk. Okay. I'm not going to have a separate Headings for each one of them. I'm going to inter interview. I have interwoven them uh, in this in this particular talk. So, uh, what is the agenda? I will start with uh, differentiating startups with uh, small businesses. Any business uh, when we are trying to do, it can be uh, treated as a startup provided is able to meet certain criteria. Okay, what is so special about startups? I will talk about it. I will give some examples. Right, some of the examples are known to us. Some of the examples are not really known. Then I will talk about uh, the status of startups in India in terms of numbers, how much money they are generating, and how many people are uh, working, and what is aspirational value, what people are interested in becoming. I will talk about this a little bit. Then I'll talk about the building blocks of startups, how uh, startups are uh, different from, uh, say, any other regular businesses. Right? In a neighborhood, I can open a, a tea shop. How this is different from a startup, I will uh, talk about it. I'll also talk about various components of an ecosystem. Okay. The startups as a small businesses will flourish only when certain components or functions are present in your entire ecosystem. Okay. We will also talk about what is this ecosystem is all about. Or uh, as an aspiring startup entrepreneur, if you are interested in becoming a, in an entrepreneur or would like to uh, start something, uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, startups, okay, what are the different functions that are available? What are the different components that are available in the ecosystem? How do I really make use of it? I will talk about that as well. And uh, till now, the things are very rosy. I will also talk about uh, barriers. Okay, you are looking at uh, having a startup. What are the possible barriers you can, you can uh, kind of uh, uh, face when you are trying to run these particular businesses? This is what I'm going to do, right? Uh, as I told you, this is uh, I'm keeping this for uh, people who are in uh, college second year onwards and who are from a smaller town. So looking at uh, knowing more about startups, okay, uh, rather than uh, people who are running the startups. Okay, people who are running the startups, feel free to comment if I make any mistakes or would like to add anything to whatever I'm talking about. Okay, this is the agenda. Right now, 
uh, I will uh, talk about the small businesses. This is one of the very interesting uh, tea shop that is located in Kolkata. Sells tea that is made of uh, this uh, being made in this brass container. Right? It's very popular. Supposedly, it is there for last uh, say 70 years or 80 years or so. But this is only one shop. It is located in only one street. It has not really gone to multiple places. Right. Whereas compared to this particular shop, it's called uh, Chayos. Uh, this is right in front of my campus. At present, it, they're having more than uh, 70 different outlets in most of the metropolitan places they have, which is growing very fast. It's also a tea shop. Okay, In Tamil, uh, where I come from, they call it tea kadai. Okay, Or uh, the people, my friends in North India, they call it uh, tela. Okay, chai ka tela. All right. Now, what is the difference between these two places? Okay, one place, if you look at it, is selling tea. Okay, this person is uh, selling tea. Okay, they are also they're selling tea. What is the difference between these two places? We call this as a small business. Okay, but we call this as a startup. Right. Uh, so there is a place where you can go and have your tea and come back. They have uh, similar shops all across the country, and it is growing very fast. It is being run by uh, four uh, IITs gradu who graduated from IITs. They started this. There are close to maybe 40 or 50 million US dollars has been invested in this particular business. It is growing every day. Okay. Whereas people are not really interested in investing money in this kind of business. It's not growing. All right. Apart from this uh, uh, surface level information, what is this major difference between these two businesses? Okay. Anyone can uh, chat, uh, write in the chat. Okay. What is the major difference between, say, Chayos? and our uh, 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 lovely uh, Chaiwala who is in Kolkata. What is the difference between these two? Why one business we call that as a, oh, the neighborhood, uh, uh, Thela, we are saying, the other one we are calling that as a startup. What is the difference between these two? Anyone? You can just, uh, you can write in the chat. What is the difference? What is the difference between Chayos? It is uh, when when you look at it, you are uh, having a lot more better light. There is a computer, and uh, you can use your credit card or you can use your uh, mobile app to pay, make payments and everything. Compared to this Chaiwala, what is the big difference? Not globally available. Okay, right. Okay, any other answers? Any other answers? All right. Okay. In terms of okay. Okay. In terms of uh, you look at this. Okay. When you when you look at this, even a normal chai wala can become a target customer. Is uh, uh, one more response, which is nice, because says that one is widely spread, reaching to many people at once. While chai wala is selling at only one place only. Wonderful. Okay. Geographical restrictions. Very nice. Okay. I'll also talk about other styles give value to the customers. Yes. Okay. Even the, our regular chai wall also giving uh, uh, value to the customer. Lack of finance can be another one. Why is all the modern amenities are there in the startup? Yes. Okay. All these things are true. Whether the chai wall uh, makes it modern and opens another shop in some other locality, it will become a startup. Okay. If it just opens another branch, it will become a startup. Okay. That's a question we are really talking about. All right. So if you look at the existing startups, some of them are really, really big, say, for example, Flipkart or Mintra or Paytm. Okay, these are the very formal ones which we are familiar with. When you look at them, they are really, really big. Okay, anybody can really start this. Okay. Whether you belong to a particular caste group or which class or which gender or we, you know, only one particular regional language does not do not really matter. Right? Uh, irrespective of uh, whatever you are, you should be able to start a company which we call that as a startup and should be able to uh, reach to your level like uh, say Flipkart. We are talking about 100 crore or 200 crore or 300 worth crore uh, valued companies. Okay, Anybody can become. That's the beauty of this particular startups. Okay, Marketing and advertising. So when you look at this, okay, a lot of us feel that, oh, you put in money, you built a nice infrastructure, put air conditioner and advertise it everywhere, you will become a startup. That's not the uh, not that's not the differentiator. Okay, we don't really say that because of this only we are called as a startup. I'm not sure. Okay, the idea of this particular talk is to understand what is this particular startup is all about, right? 
say chaios when you walk in okay they will ask your uh, mobile number you enter the mobile number and then uh, you take this mobile number they enter this mobile number they say okay your name is vignesh say what kind of tea you would like to have i say that i will have a, a, a ginger tea right i go there i say every wednesday at 4 o'clock i have my ginger tea right so three wednesdays have gone the fourth wednesday if i don't go chaios will send me a text saying that we missed you why didn't you come for a ginger tea right they are able to collect if they are able to understand that this particular person is drinking tea every uh, wednesday at 4 o'clock they are able to capture this information through their uh, systems using their mobile number yeah, right suppose i am going there every day they clearly know that what kind of tea i am drinking okay so what happens if there are hundreds and hundreds of vignesh's are going to this particular shop they exactly know what kind of tea these people are drinking so that is a case at the end of the month they exactly know how many customers are they walk into the shop how many customers are drinking what kind of tea and how much of ginger is being consumed right now what happens is for the next month how much ginger has to be consumed they are able to understand just looking at this particular earlier data okay that has been collected through the earlier that, that has been collected through this particular billing systems okay or the information systems that are located in this particular organization or the information technology that is deployed in that organization so what is really happening right i stayed in uh, uh, delhi for one year after that i moved to chennai and when i walk into chaios in chennai first time okay chaios will exactly know that last one year you were in delhi this uh, month your first time you are taking in chennai okay they will exactly know so this mobility of the customers also they will able to understand it so next time okay i am able to give my number exactly the shopkeeper knows that you would like to have ginger tea sir even before me ordering i give my mobile number they are able to understand it now what is really happening here right my information is being used by uh, technology in this particular startup okay this particular technology is being used to understand what kind of preferences customer is having okay what kind of inventory how much chai powder how much mill how much ginger i need to buy it okay and what kind of incentives can be provided or what kind of promotions it can be provided suppose they want to attract me to come to the shop on a thursday they can clearly say that oh or if you come on a thursday since you are drinking tea every wednesday but you come on a thursday the tea will be free for you right or if they know my data birth they will say your data birth is coming why don't you uh, your your birthday is coming why don't you come with your friends right we will uh, we will give you 20 percentage discount or i will give you a, a special tea for all your friends birthday party so what is really happening a customer in the chai wala if some more personal it is there in his uh, head okay the person who is making the tea is, is in his head now suppose there are 500 customers are coming every day he is not able to understand what is really happening you need to have an extraordinary amount of processing power in your head to understand the nature of the customers whereas in chaios the, the the each piece of the information is being recorded in this particular information technology and they are able to come up with very very customized solutions for the customers so when you are able to move uh, one shop or open another shop in some other locality you exactly know what kind of uh, tea people are likely to drink based on the previous information based on the data that is already collected you have so what are really what are we really looking at we are looking at right there is a, there is a organization or there is a business using information technology to scale it up to grow this particular businesses is using information technology and it is able to provide lot more customized solution the exact tea whatever tea you are really looking forward i am able to provide it okay i am not dependent on people okay to so say here in this uh, shop if this person goes and leaves fallen sick for two days what happens is the shop is closed we are not able to provide it whereas in this case the business continues the business continues right now that is one example okay other examples of startups are say for example byjus or paytm or oyo rooms okay and what about this company anybody knows what inmobi does anybody knows what this particular company does inmobi byjus paytm oyo or startup companies even inmobi is a startup company right so what is the kind of business they do or for that matter uh, delivery okay what is the kind of business they do okay. now if you look at this 
these are the, these are three companies that are providing businesses in uh, direct to the customers so the customer walks in and uh, you are uh, able to uh, deliver directly to them for inmobi who is these people are okay uh, swan southray is saying uh, they are investors they are not exactly investors okay what what these people do in mobi in mobi what is this particular business is doing uh, delivery what is this business doing okay. they are into uh, business to business domain okay they don't really deal with the customers like you and me they will treat other businesses like them uh, other businesses like customers in mobi provides lot more uh, technology support related to mobile advertisements or mobile domain if you are uh, an advertiser you are looking at uh, mobile applications for your advertisements or mobile browsers for advertisement in mobi provides lot more technical support if they generate lot more income through that delivery is a, a logistic support if you are running an e-commerce company and your customer is placing certain orders and the orders need to be delivered delivery is an intermediary partner helps you to deliver the things they are also startup now if you look at this choyos is one example byjus is another example completely into uh, educational technology services paytm is into uh, mobile technology services or mobile banking services okay oyo is into uh, hospitality or room booking related things in mobi is mobile advertisement delivery is related to logistics sky is the limit you can think of any domain you can start your company okay what in you can start your company there are multiple companies or multiple startups are present in this particular country now some numbers right the status of uh, uh, status of startups in india okay one is you look at in india you have uh, uh, 83 unicorns with a total valuation of 277 us billion uh, billion us dollars what is this unicorn each company is valued as more than uh, 1 uh, us uh, billion dollars all right so the valuation of the company is very very large we are talking about uh, enormous amount of values being created in the by, by this particular companies now uh, there is a data that says that in india okay uh, in data in india uh, in india there are around uh, 60000 startups that means uh, you do not even know okay there are hundreds and hundreds of paytm equivalents or chaios equivalents or oyo equivalents or inmobi equivalents are operating in completely completely different domains it can be related to health startups or it can be related to agriculture or it can be related to water conservation there are plenty of startups are present in this uh, in this country right now in terms of money flowing in okay how much money is uh, is is brought into this country into this particular startups in order to in, a, in terms of investment is okay in uh, 2021 the last year itself is close, close to 77 um, us billion dollars okay there is a larger volume of the money okay people are bringing in from outside and they are investing in this particular country investing in this particular companies so chaios has received money paytm has received money byjus is receiving money almost all the companies have received money right so uh, if you look at the numbers okay we are talking about uh, more than 2 lakh jobs okay now when you are talking about jobs we also need to be understand each of these particular jobs are uh, direct employment direct employment in the sense you are able to uh, get a job in a in a startup as a programmer or as a marketing person or as a counselor right but each of the jobs also have a uh, have this potential of generating additional jobs okay there is some statistic somebody uh, uh, some some time ago people said that for each programming job you are able to have uh, more than 6 or 7 uh, jobs or extra jobs are being created it means you have a startup there are 10 people are working so there is there should be somebody uh, should be doing a housekeeping work there should be a canteen there should be a cafeteria there should be some kind of taxi services for them or there should be a real estate construction for them so there are a lot more jobs are being created so if you look at this particular numbers this numbers are very very exciting very very impressive okay there is a larger volume of money is coming in every day some startups are starting the valuation is going very high is generating very jobs and additionally you have incentives like uh, coming in uh, business world cover okay it's a status symbol you feel that is very nice you are doing college third year you look at this particular numbers wow so much of money is coming inside the india and uh, i can start as i can start something i can provide employment to people and uh, if i am able to do well probably i can come in uh, one of those business magazines newspaper uh, uh, cover st- cover as well this is a kind of aspirational okay people are very very excited about it they say that wow this is really really nice i should be able to do this right now so we understood okay the small businesses are not exactly small uh, businesses when if you want to call them as a startup 
So if you want to call them as a startup, okay, you need to have certain qualities. What are these particular qualities? Okay, when you are looking at what do you mean by these particular startups? We are looking at multiple qualities. Okay, what are the qualities? One is technology. You are uh, you are having a, a solution, okay, which is completely built using a technology. If the technology can be a purely an information technology or it can be related to biotechnology, it can be related to any technology, but it's completely built by technology, right? Either the organization is completely run by technology or the product is being enabled by technology, okay? The technology is the main component in a startup. Second one is the ability to scale up, right? I'm uh, running this uh, uh, chaos in one place and I want to uh, I want to really uh, uh, start similar branches all over the country. Okay, is it possible for me to do this, right? Uh, and is it possible for me to uh, take this particular technology and deploy it, and you should be able to do this? Yes, the scaling up potential is very very high. Okay, I'm using Paytm today. Okay, tomorrow I see my uh, my cousin who's located in a small town in Tamil Nadu is able to install the same Paytm and continue to use it. I'm able to send money, and he's able to send money to you. To me, but the scaling up is relatively easy. I'm able to do this. Third one is I'm using a lot of data sciences. Okay, this technology or the kind of information technology I'm using it in this organization is able to capture a lot more data, and I'm able to make use of the data for taking decision making. Okay, There's a lot of growth of the businesses depend on the data sciences. So there is an element of data sciences. The fourth one is a founding team. Okay, I see. Three or four friends coming together, well qualified, coming together and uh, uh, put their passion into ground and they're doing a lot more work together. I'm good in programming. My friend is good with the business aspects. My third, my friend is good with finances. Three of us will come together and I start this particular company. Founding team is very, very important. The next one is looking at market. Do I have a product that can be sold in the market? Paytm, when it came, a lot many people are not using it. Demonetization happened. Everybody is using Paytm. Right, why are rooms? Uh, I'm traveling from one place to another place, I'm not able to book a location now. Why is able to solve the uh, problem? I'm able to book a room for 800 rupees or 1200 rupees in religious places very easily. Okay, there is a market, people are not able to uh, solve this problem, and you know, this company is able to solve the problem, and you are able to find a solution, and people are using it. And next one is funds the amount of money available to scale it up. Okay, now I have money. I'm able to run it in two locations, but I want to spread it to 10 more locations. Now, for that, I need to have a lot more money. Early days, I need to go to bank. Bank will ask for a collateral security. Or I need to go to ask my father. My father will say that, what is the return you will give me? You may not trust me. So there is a problem related to it. Whereas now the money is available which to grow this particular businesses, either from an idea stage to a commercialization stage or from initial commercializations to the scaling up stage. Okay, different stages, this is possible. And the last one is the very, very important one is the failures are not defeats. Okay. Uh, 20 years ago, you go and tell your family members saying that I started a business and it failed. You will be treated as a loser saying that, why are you trying to do this? Why don't you join a job? Paying job is very important. Go and join a job. Whereas with startups, what has really happened now is you call yourself as a serial entrepreneur. I started this company, two companies, three companies failed, but I gained a lot of experiences. I'm, I'm trying to do with my fourth company. Okay, being a failure in an entrepreneurial ecosystem is not considered to be a bad thing. It is not treated very negatively. Okay, now that means, okay, when you are starting a company, you don't want to really worry what will happen. Okay, if I fail, what will happen? What people will say? Okay. Those kind of things, you don't want to really worry about it which is absolutely fine in a startup ecosystem, wherein people say that it's okay, you ran this company for two years, things did not work, what is the big deal? Let us start another one, or you go and join another company, absolutely no problem at all, right? These are the things are building blocks, blocks for running this particular startup, okay? This clearly differentiates from your, your small businesses. Earlier, you want to start a small business, you need to have a little bit of money, okay? Family should support you, okay? Even without technology, you can support, you can start a company. Whereas with a startup, these are the elements should be present or the block should be present. Apart from this building blocks, we are also talking about ecosystem. Now, what is this ecosystem? There are a few things that are present outside that are very important for us. There are a few things that are uh, present outside that are very important for us. What are they? 
I have an idea, but I do not know what to do with that. Okay, so this is a yeah, startup leadership is a program where group of people like you and me who have some ideas are trying to do business. We we'll let you get mentorship from the people. Okay, they are completely a non-profit organization. Runs this particular program. You go and join the program. You will have uh, ten weekend classes where the different aspects of the businesses are exposed to you. People who have done this business are uh, successful. They'll come and speak to you. This is how I ran this particular business. Okay, look for startup leadership programs in your locality. If it is not there, you can start one yourself. Absolutely no problem. Similar people coming together, and you can call the entrepreneurs for free. They'll come and talk to you. Okay, the entire ecosystem. People are trying to help each other. That kind of ambience is present. The second one is looking at meetups. All right, now I have this uh, small idea. I want to discuss about this. I do not know where to go. Okay, you go go and open uh, meetups wherein they clearly there are various groups that are coming together. They call different names. In this name, they call this New Delhi Startup Founder One Zero One. You go and sit there, pay me two hundred rupees or three hundred rupees for a cup of coffee. You can listen to people. Okay, somebody will come and deliver a talk. Okay, and somebody will come and uh, talk about uh, how they raise money, how they are able to go to the different markets. They are able to do this. Okay, this is completely a meetups. third one is there are exhibitions being done there are exhibitions are done wherein uh, the fintech companies okay paytm is a fintech company okay uh, uh, so these kind of companies will come together and they exhibit okay what are the work they particular do now if you are a, an entrepreneur thinking about an idea related to fintech you want to understand what kind of businesses people are doing you can walk into this exhibition you can really understand what people are doing some of these exhibitions are free Okay, it's completely free, and you can attend this, right? Or if you feel that no, I don't feel like uh, attending this kind of. Uh, sorry, I don't feel like attending this kind of talks. I don't feel like attending this kind of exhibitions. You can uh, visit this uh, startup India run by the government of India. They provide seed funding. They provide all the information relevant for uh, starting a company in this country. Okay, some of this uh, uh, information is really really useful to you. Okay, as per the Indian government is supporting a lot in terms of funding, in terms of market access, they are doing a lot more stuff. So, as an entrepreneur, what you need to have is a grand idea to deal with uh, an existing problem, and you go ahead and uh, implement it. Okay, go ahead and implement it. So, you can either uh, attend this particular forums, or you can go for these exhibitions, or you can attend these meetings, or you just go to the government facility and trying to understand what they have, what they provide to you. or another way of looking at us okay uh, i look at this particular startup uh, uh, portal where and they are showing that there, there is a competition being run by itc okay related to a particular theme and the winner will get around 35 lakhs so that means what you need to have is only idea you go and participate in this particular competition you will get money your company is ready now or you have a grand idea coastal labs is a, a private run uh, initiative they don't really require any money from you you walk in there and say that i have an idea if they like your idea they will provide a place for your office they provide a little bit of mentoring support they will also provide a little bit of money to develop the prototype okay we call that as an incubators and it will also help you to go to the market okay you go and meet the rest of the people to sell your product they will help you out the initial seeding process they will help you there are similar organizations are present all over the country or if you feel that uh, i have lot more uh, uh, interesting stuff to do i have the programming background and everything you can also go to google okay google also runs a, a similar accelerator program more or less like coastal labs you can go and uh, talk about it you can go and find an accelerator they will help you out in doing it or you have a, already a product in place but you want to sell it to global market amazon will help you out okay what did they say you have a startup and there is a, a global selling uh, proper program is available you can go and sell it in amazon through amazon or you go to uh, or if you are interested like or if you are interested okay you can go to uh, places like iit delhi all the iits all the premier institutes in this country they have incubation centers okay has every year they call for applications you send out an application you have an idea you don't need a product in the hand you walk in there you do a presentation about your idea they like it they will give you money they will give you space they will provide support for one year they will help you to go to the market okay they will take a small equity they will take a small 100 i mean out of the 100 rupees they will be take 10 rupees out of uh, the weightage in terms of equity they call it equity they will take 10 percentage equity 
similarly iit kharagpur iit bombay iit madras wherever you are located nearest iits you can walk in you can find out the details or you have established this particular company you are looking at the next stage you have done one well in one particular location you want to go to other locations you can go to bloom ventures you can go to is a, a, a venture capital company where you go and sell your idea saying that this is the kind of business i'm already running yeah startup running i'm looking at more money so that i can grow to the other markets other geographies i want to do this bloom ventures will help you out in doing it this is so what i'm trying to do here what do you need to have this is a grand idea okay one idea you have now you can polish that idea to go to uh, by going to startup leadership programs or attending meetups and everything or you can go to coastal labs if your idea is very good and you are able to run this company a little bit using your own personal money or a, a loan from your family and friends and you want to take it to the next level you can go to venture capitalist or you can go to iits or if you say that no 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 let me participate in a competition win that particular money and start my company okay itc is going to support you through startup india you can do that itc is just an example so if you go to startup india space you have plenty of uh, uh, plenty of competitions are running you can go and participate in a third one is if you don't like uh, those kind of things you would like to uh, do it in an open competition there is a website called dirt to compete those who are doing a business school you will understand it you go to this particular web page and you have various competition hackathons and hiring challenges lot more things are happening so you can go and pitch in your idea you can win prize money okay you can win uh, seats in company you can do multiple things okay this entire idea of co working space okay you don't really need to have a your own office space you don't have to buy uh, uh, buy uh, take money from your parents and uh, uh, start an office yourself you can walk into co working spaces you go walk there the entire facility is already available you say i want only one seat so they'll give you a table they'll give you a seat okay you see completely air conditioned you have internet available coffee machines are available there is a conference room available per month you pay for uh, you only one seat if your company is growing you hiring one more person you can take one more uh, one more seat so the burden of okay uh, having an office running this uh, managing the operations can be completely completely kept aside and you can focus only on your company you can when you work in co working spaces okay or if you are looking for certain lessons in your life okay say for example oh uh, i would like to know more about it why there are a lot more companies are not really working out of course you can go back to the old school you can look at uh, some books written by people this is one of the interesting books you can have a look at this okay a person has started a, a company called fabmod in uh, 2000 with the, the in the, the dot com bust happened in 2000 he started a company and did not uh, scale it up properly it got shut down okay so he is talking he is talking about his own experience in the company a beautiful book you can read it this is purely you want to read about it you can buy this book you can read about it before you jump into this entrepreneurial journey right so if you look at this small recap startup environment is very nice plenty of money coming in 60000 companies lot of jobs are getting created you get uh, you get featured in a, in, a, in a business magazine cover right if you look at it there is an ecosystem okay there is there are uh, people who are trying to polish your ideas help you in polishing ideas helping uh, people uh, 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 people to understand how do you take this idea to the market people help you uh, to grow into different geographical markets people help you to come and work okay there are multiple places okay multiple places are available or you can just participate in a competition win prize money with that you can start the money you start the businesses so you don't you are not really dependent on anyone okay for that matter your family and friends so you are not answerable to anyone in a sense you he what you need to have is a one grand idea with that particular idea you are able to start the business and grow into another flipkart or a paytm you will be able to do this okay that's the overall picture of a startup but then there are some barriers okay i need to be a little bit more careful about this saying that this can happen okay one is low success rate okay it is more like uh, just like bollywood not everybody can become salman khan not everybody can uh, 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 everybody can become salman khan but uh, not everybody becomes a salman khan so there are hundreds and hundreds of people come to mumbai to become a cine star one or two people become very successful same logic applies here okay when you start a, a startup not everybody gets successful maybe out of 
the existing research says that only 10% uh, of the people are uh, a ten percent of the people are able to become a yeah sustainable business. You are able to run it. You are able to uh, manage uh, uh, salary for your employees. You are able to go grow incrementally. The rest of the businesses will go uh, uh, bankrupt after two or three years. The success rate is very very low. Uh, having a better social capital and network helps a bit. Okay, what do you mean by social capital? Okay, if you are studying in a good college or a good place. There is a possibility that should be they should be able to provide you good support, good support in the sense they will not give you money directly. Suppose you are a school senior as a, a venture capitalist, you send them an email that you are also coming from the same school. You would like to come and meet him for a cup of coffee or meet her for a cup of coffee. She will say, "Why don't you come down?" They may end up they may end up meeting you. Okay, the meeting access is easily permissible for earlier days. <laughs> okay. Later, you need to demonstrate that you need to have a, a great product or great services. Your idea is very great. But initial days, you should be able to get meetings. People will respond to your emails. Okay, you should be able to meet people. Once you established in this market, so you stayed in this market, a startup ecosystem for six months, three months, talking to people, other people, rest of the people are relatively easy, right? It is more like, uh, more like you are familiar if you are working in a uh, working in a, say, for example, a health space. You will end up meeting a lot of people in the first six, six months. So after that, what happens? People are familiar about you. You are familiar about them. So that that particular network really helps a bit. So you need to build your network. You need to build your social capital. If you are from a good place, if you are studied from a good place, you are coming from a, a, a good network to place. That particular advantage is there. Otherwise, over a period of time, you need to build it. Managing technology and business simultaneously, it's also a problem. Right, uh, you are very good with coding, but you do not know anything about marketing. Okay, managing these two things also, there is a yeah, little bit of uh, problem. So everybody takes time to build skills. Over a period of time, you should be able to build the skills. Right, you start uh, with uh, technology startups, and you do not know how do you speak very sophisticatedly to people, investors, or other customers. You develop the skills over a period of time. Okay. So when you are doing undergraduate days or master's days, participating in, participating in various events, trying to manage events, okay, trying to uh, set up a technology for the particular event, or trying to do something for your college or institution will help you to gain the particular experience. People who undertake uh, leadership roles and conducting college festivals, cultural festivals, doing uh, technology events tend to do well because they gain so much of experience in handling people, resources, time, and energy and everything. You learn all these things, and uh, perseverance uh, matters. Okay, uh, not losing hope and continuously working and becoming serious uh, every day uh, and uh, be serious about your product is going to help you a lot, right? In terms of building something, saying that I will build something. This particular solution is going to be very important. It's going to change the world. Believing in it and continuously pushing it is very very important. Okay, rather than looking at, I will do a startup now. Next year, I will make hundred crores. I want to buy a new car. That should not be your focus. Your focus is more about building something and continuously working for it. Uh, looking for a, a nice balanced founding team, it is also important. Okay, you cannot run things alone all the time. Try to have two or three friends who are serious about uh, uh, doing this particular business, starting a business. And uh, they also have certain capacity. Okay, whatever capacity you do not have, your friend is having. So both of you are joining together and running this is is going to be very very important. The existing data also shows uh, shows us that uh, co-founder conflict breaks bonds. Okay, two people come together, they start the company. After some time, they don't like each other. They are going in different directions. The company also breaks. So try to form a good team. Two people, three people come together and build a team that is going to be helpful when you are starting this. This is one of the realities we're trying to build startups and run. So what I did, okay, basically I spoke about uh, what is this startup, how this is different from a normal business. I highlighted different components or building blocks related to startups. I also explained how uh, the startups are enabled by uh, different components in an ecosystem. Then I spoke about uh, what are the different barriers for this. Okay, when you are trying to run this particular startup, what are the different barriers and how do you handle? With this, I'll stop. Any questions, I'll be happy to take. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Vignesh, for this uh, wonderful uh, presentation.
I think, in fact, I also had a lot of uh, questions and uh, you have addressed some of them. The very basic question of uh, what is a unicorn? Because many people used to say, like, uh, we are looking at uh, achieving that uh, unicorn number. But uh, in fact, uh, today you gave that uh, definition of what is a unicorn. So thanks to you. So now we will uh, take up questions from our uh, participants. Uh, I, I think before we go to this, if uh, Professor Chakrabarti has any uh, comments or uh, observations, we can... No, no, this is very interesting that uh, the way Professor Vignesh, uh, you know, differentiated the startup ecosystem from everybody else, uh, you know, draws a lot of interesting parallels in terms of a lifetime university where you learn and work. So it is like a lifetime university where you learn and work, you are passing and failing, you are part of uh, a, a whole alumni system who, who contributes together and you are building an economy, which is a very interesting structure and also a new social paradigm uh, about it. Uh, let us have the questions from the students. After that, I will ask a couple of questions. Sure, sure. So, yes, uh, yeah, yeah. so if you have any questions, kindly put it in the chat box. So we'd be happy to uh, put it up to Professor Vignesh for his response. So I just wanted to ask a, a quick question to Professor Vignesh. So how easy or how hard it is to get a venture capitalist to invest your money um, in a, a, a early stage idea? Right. Uh, okay. If when you look at uh, investment, there are various stages. One is the first, the people start with your own savings. Okay. Now uh, your own savings. Suppose you work for two years and you save some money. When you are starting a startup, you are investing the entire money in it. Then you go to family and friends. We call those angel investors. Now angel investors will say, what is the kind of investment you have made? Okay. Whether you have sacrificed something for your own business before asking me money. Angel investors will give money. Then we'll, so somebody is believing in your idea has given you money. Then you go to the next level. We call that as a seed money. In the seed money, uh, okay. When seed money comes, you go through uh, incubators. Okay, incubators say, for example, IIT Kadakpur will have one, IIT Delhi has, IIT uh, Bombay has, almost all the IITs have, IAMs also have it. And you have a lot of private incubators also. They like your idea. They say that, okay, your idea is very good. You come and sit with us. Okay, I will help you in building your product. Okay, that means you need support for your one programmer or two programmers and you need space to sit, which I will provide. That, that is also another level of funding. Okay, now I will give you some money so that you pay your salary. You don't have to worry about your food and you don't have to worry about rent. I'm going to take a little bit of equity. That is relatively easy to get. Okay, then successful incubator companies or uh, organizations when they host maybe 20 different uh, startups in them. So there will be a long floor. You have 20 people sitting and working on companies. They will call a lot of venture capitalists. And uh, periodically, they will call venture capitalists. In front of the venture capitalists, you pitch in your ideas. All the 25 companies will say that, OK, this is the idea I have. If a venture capitalist likes, likes your idea, they will end up investing money. So if you are part of, say, Google Accelerator or Y Combinator, those kind of things, if you are able to part of it, what happens, the chances of getting this money is very, very high. That means your idea needs to be good to get into a good incubation company. Good incubation, that's one direction. Another direction is sometimes the VCs are looking around for money. They'll come and give a talk in a, in a conference, in a panel. Okay, Somebody is investing money in health startup. They're giving a talk. So after the talk, you go and meet them during the tea time saying that I have this particular idea in a health startup, whether you will be able to invest it. If your idea is good, in that 30 seconds, you are able to pitch in. You will get an appointment to uh, do an elaborate presentation about your idea. Okay, that is that is also possible. So in general, people say that if idea is very good, there is a scalability, you are likely to get money. At least for the initial years, there's no problem at all. Okay, uh, there is a question. Yeah. There is a question here, how we calculate valuation of a company? Multiple ways. One of the ways I will say, uh, say for example, I'm running a a fintech company i'm uh, helping people to transfer money from one person to another person right uh, when i do this what happens i have five uh, say 500 people using my uh, product now every each one of them are using say 15 transactions or 20 transactions 
I have some data about this, uh, each of these particular people. Now, uh, the calculation, the valuation will come into play where how, what is the potential value of this particular customer down the line? Next two years, how many more transactions they will do, whether they will end up buying a new products or not. Okay, so if I'm running a company, if I want to acquire this particular customer, how much money I'm going to spend in newspaper advertisement or do a lot more promotional campaigns to get this particular customer. This person is already having this particular customer, already acquired 500 people, and next three years down the line, it is going to grow, say, X amount or Y amount. I attach certain value to this particular customer. That will give me uh, some base value. And then based on my own projections, how the company is going to grow over a period of time, I increase that particular valuation. Okay, this is one of the ways of doing it. Okay. Uh, so there is another there is next. Okay. Jyotika says, uh, asking, is con incorporation of a company or a good idea for raising funds? You don't have to worry about uh, initial logistics. You don't have to even worry about whether a company is registered or not. You just pursue your idea. If somebody is liking it, they will say, I will give you money. Are you registered? That particular point of time, you say, no, I haven't registered. I will go and register now. Registration of a company is the least of your problems. It's a matter of two days, three days, you can register it, you can get the money. So raising funds and registration of the company, they are not related to each other. So don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, Sagar Mahajan says that how to convince our near members so that they could add support to us. Okay, uh, okay. One, one is uh, you need to be very careful about how you are picking up your friends at the undergraduate level. Not necessarily you need to be self-centered, but you pick up friends with like-mindedness. Okay. I like to do certain things. My friends also like to do certain things. You become uh, uh, together. I've seen uh, emails written by people, friends, uh, saying that I'm looking for a co-founder in this particular domain. Uh, okay, I'm trying to build a product. I'm looking for a technology partner. Okay, So you can spread the name. You can spread this particular message in your network. So somebody will come up and say, I'm also interested. So both of you will sit together and take a call. If in your closed circle, if you're not able to do this, then uh, you can go to the next level. Ideally, the, the, the first level in terms of you're able to identify people and form a team and run a company is better. That means if you, none of your friends are interested, friends are friends, but then uh, the like-minded is not there, probably you need to look at those kind of people. Okay, and the next question is... Okay. So I think, uh, so there was, there was a question on uh, the better.com uh, controversy that uh, cropped up recently. What is your views on that uh, better.com? Uh, what dot com, uh, Dr. Vignesh, I don't get it. Better.com, better.com. So recently, uh, it, can you hear me? No, I can hear you, but I do not know about that particular controversy. I, I'm not getting it, yeah. Okay, so, okay, sure, sure. So there was another question from one of the participants. At what stage, stage should we consider financial institutions to raise funds? Okay, all stages. So Sakshi, thanks for the question. Uh, all stages. So one is uh, you have just an idea, plain idea in a PowerPoint presentation. You have only that money is available. Now, after that, you are converting that idea into a product or services. Uh, money is available. After that, uh, you are trying to get into market. Now your prototype is ready. You want to go to the market and sell it to people and start supporting it. My money is available. Now you run this company in your limited resources for six months and you want to go to the next big market. Money is available. So in all stages, you can ask for money. No problem. Okay. Uh, Aruni is asking, if I start a startup, then how can I get tech support from the government? The government does not provide you technology support. Okay, government provides support only in uh, two or three areas. One is in terms of uh, incubation. Okay, there are a lot of incubation centers. They will provide uh, access to the facility there. They will provide a little bit of money. Technology support, some of the IITs provide, but you need to talk to uh, people yourself. It's not that I have an idea and I'm looking for a technology. Can you provide technology? That doesn't happen. Right, suppose, say, for example, you are building a product for agriculture. Right, you are, you are looking at a drone based uh, fertilizer dis uh, dispersal. Now, you want to build a drone, right? Now, you cannot ask uh, an educational institution saying that I'm uh, okay, give me some uh, technology support so that I can build a lesson work like this. You won't find out a faculty member who's working on this particular technology. Ask them, I have this particular idea, 
I'm looking for a support to develop this particular drone. Will you be a partner in my uh, in my uh, project or a venture? The faculty member will say yes or no based on what you are offering. Then you and the faculty member will become part of the partners in the company, and the company may get uh, incubated in IIT. That way it works. Okay, it's not the other way around. You send out an email saying that provide me technology, people are going to provide. That will not happen. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Ignesh. Uh, now I request uh, Professor Chakrabarti to uh, take over the proceedings. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Vignesh. Uh, it looks good. I, you know, many people uh, are uh, uh, need to understand that just technology uh, is not the only piece that is there to a startup. So for a student or a, for a young person trying to move into a startup business, what are the knowledge components that they need to have with them as a team? I think that is important. Uh, and if you can elaborate a little bit on that, uh, that will educate them. Wonderful, sir. Thank you very much for the question, sir. Uh, if you look at a startup leadership program, OK, uh, they have divided this entire program into 10 weeks. I looked at their syllabus. Uh, I, this is almost like a, a mini MBA, when I say mini MBA. So what is the thing? One is, uh, how do you uh, conceptualize an idea? Okay, When you're having an idea, whether the idea is suitable for the market, is it solving somebody else's problem? Or uh, it is also providing to uh, some kind of support to uh, increase somebody else's lifestyle or better. Okay, what is that idea? How it is linked to the market? So you are refining the idea first. The next stage is how do you convert that idea into your product or services? Okay, the product development related uh, knowledge. The third one is looking at uh, how do you sell it in the market, say sales and marketing related aspects. And the fourth one is looking at uh, finance and accounting. When the flow money starts flowing in, how do you really handle this particular money and everything? Okay, if the product is uh, yeah, which one wherein you are selling that product, which is a yeah, hardware or uh, something physical, and there is a post sales maintenance, then you need to handle it. Then we are talking about things related to operations. So it is more like when you are talking about idea, idea development, product development, sales and marketing, and finance, and uh, uh, market research, operations. So everything will come into play. All right. But then when the company starts growing, you have more number of people are coming in. So you need to manage people. So people skills are very important. Right. Then uh, when, uh, when you are looking at how people should perceive about this, then the branding comes important. So you keep on accumulating knowledge record. At the undergraduate level, having some ideas about uh, attending maybe a one week's class related to entrepreneurial development, which will cover all these basic things in a lighter way, I mean, in a, in a lighter manner. They should be able to, if they are able to attend it, that gives a broader idea about what this is all about. Okay. Once you jump into the business, a lot more things will happen. You keep on improvising as you are running it. Okay. That also happens. Right. I think this, this was very important for them to understand that it's not just technology. It's not just gathering things, but how much, you know, the startups, uh, how much they need to be hands-on, how long, you know what is the what is the what is the you know lifestyle of a startup compared to a, a company executive or something like that that i think is very important right uh, uh, people say that sir if your work is uh, if your hobby then you don't have to work for a single day right if you are fascinated by this particular idea and you are continuously working for 18 hours 19 hours you don't feel burdened because you are working for yourself, you are enjoying it. Uh, startup, uh, yes, environment is that uh, you do jaru pocha or you do uh, cleaning, table cleaning and uh, toilet cleaning, you do it yourself. You also do the programming, coding, you also sell it ourselves. The story is the early days of the flip card, the bunsels, the founders delivered the books themselves. They sat in the back side of the bike and went and delivered it. That is the case. They bought the book from the market, they packed themselves and they delivered it. So that is a kind of, okay, now you are talking about guys from IIT Delhi, worked in multinational companies, coming and starting a startup, doing a programming and then buying a book and packing and delivering themselves. So that is the kind of lifestyle you are talking about in initial days. Are you ready for it? Now, what we are really looking at stories about founders now, after 10 years or after seven years, they're investing money, they are going in private jets. That story comes after 10 years. What really happened in 10 years, you need to be prepared for it. Lots of hard work, lots of toiling, and uh, no uh, working hours limitation. 
you are prepared for it and startup is fine otherwise no thank you i think these two uh, are very illuminating responses which will uh, give the students uh, a lot of things to think about but not to get deterred because this is one of the most enriching and fulfilling ways in life nowadays and probably the most interesting thing for students um professor vignesh i'm very grateful to you for having spared your time you. on a friday evening for the students and for the national digital library of india uh we will get back to you again and again for many other connections and maybe uh, we will require uh, a, a second round with students when there is more detailed requirement in this with this thank you come to the closure thank you so much thank you dr sonamohan thank you can close yes sir thank you uh, bye all bye. the participants for taking out time from your busy schedule and joining us uh, on this uh, friday evening uh, for all the ndla club members you can download the certificate of participation uh, maybe in uh, by monday evening you can uh, log into your respective uh, ndla club membership login and from there you can uh, download your certificate of participation so with this we are going to uh, close this session for uh, today we will quickly come back to you for the next session uh, uh, very soon thank you so much thanks to thank professor chakrabarti and professor ignesh thank you